Yes, yes, people, we are back live. We are back live on the Sarcasm City TV YouTube for another Sarcasm City TV special. Let me one sec, microphone is off. I was having problems, people. That's why. What is going on here? What is going on? Mic. No, my mic's different. There we go. Boom. Patterned. Yes, yes, people. Apologies on that. Some minor technical difficulties but we're here and we are back live on the sarcasm city tv youtube for another sarcasm city tv special for those that haven't seen the sarcasm city tv specials before it's where i sit down it's a one-on-one -on -one live stream with the biggest and best content creators in the game people we had troops on yesterday not only talking all things arsenal currently with our title arsenal chasing down the premier league and champions league but also his backstory as well because what this show is all about from a selfish perspective it's all about me getting to sit down one-on-one -on -one with people I'm fans of, people I've watched and now I'm blessed to have worked with, and also about giving people their flowers. That's what it's also for. Don't wait till people pass away and are no longer here to say how great people are and how, how they affected people and how great they were at what they did. So this person needs no introduction, but God give him a huge introduction in regards to one I don't I think he's criminally underrated and that's criminally with in all capital letters bold italic underlined because one he was a part of the first wave man's been out here 10 years maybe even more but it's definitely around that like I said fan camps so he was there from that era doing fan camps and then he's transitioned to more he's still doing fan camps still going viral but also now doing the live streams from a selfish perspective was the first non-Manchester United fan to put me on so when people are like, why is there so many Chelsea fans and Chelsea panellists and Chelsea fans in the chat? It's because of him. And I salute him for that all the time because he was the first guy to say, yo, Flawless is cold at what he does. Sarcasm City TV is cold. Like, this is a place to be because he was the first Chelsea fan here and he didn't have to do that. Blessed to be on his channel, Shameless FC. We're also two-fourths of back, the Back Again podcast as well. And... Again, like I said, his footballing knowledge, again, criminally underrated. And I think it's criminally underrated because of how funny he is. I say this all the time. He's one person, verbally, I am shook to spar with. And I will say that super shook to spar with because when he fires back, it cuts deep. You know what I'm saying? Like, he'll say shit and I'm like, whoa, <laughs> like that hurt. And I've seen him do this to countless people over and over and over again. And I'm blessed to call him a brother as well. I am super blessed to call him a brother. I've rolled to 40K on his channel. And like I said, man, criminally underrated. Got to welcome my don, my bro in the building. Carefree Lewis G. Yes, family, what are you saying? Big up, man. Appreciate the intro as always. You always do it the best out of everybody. But big up, my guy. Big up to chat as well. Big up to my regulars. I see you all, Warrior, Maldini, Georgie. Right, big up to everybody in there. It's great to be back here. I always look forward to these shows because it's like it's part casual, just a casual conversation, yeah. part just venting about football. And I've needed a lot of that <laughs> in the <laughs> last 18 months. But yeah, it's good to be back. I feel like, yeah, this is the second stream I've done since I started jury service. And I've got an opportunity to drink and just relax. Today. Yeah, man, so I, relax. I'm looking forward to the show. I kick back and I gotta give Lewis's credit as well, people. And I, obviously, you see, and you lot will see, and I'll see how hard people work, like, once we're watching. But when me and Lewis did that, man, and I forgot to say this in the intro, the Manchester City-Chelsea game, I was like, oh, Lewis a different animal with this. Because I was knackered during that. Not only are you watching the game and engaging in the game, you're also patting in the panel, you're also on the soundboard, you're also watching the comments, people. And I was like, oh, there's levels to this, 110%. So again, Lewis, God give you your flowers, and it's always great. You know what I'm saying? Having you on the well, show. Years of trying to do vlogs and titles <laughs> and all sorts of stuff on match days. The live stream just ends up being light work after that. See, that's that's there's levels to this. You know what I'm saying? There is there's levels to this. And like I said, it's all about giving your flowers. And I say to you, big up every time for all the assistance you've given me in this game and in this space and with the channel as well. So salute to you. And you like make hey, sure. I'm just glad to see the G. channel growing, man. Like I said, for you as well, you're criminally underrated yourself. 10k well overdue man it should be 20k hopefully very soon but yeah man you're gonna keep growing just just as we all are just as we all are 
we going to keep we going to keep working and before we start off the show people make sure you run up the likes first and foremost hit the like button on the video expeditiously make sure you share this across all the socials as well and that's me flawless at sarcasm city tv and subscribe to the channel sarcasm city tv and again subscribe to lewis's channel as well link is in the title carefree lewis g it's underneath in the description and on the featured channel page and we will get to all things potch and the owners and chelsea's current season but before we get out into all that we want to jump in the time machine fam want to go back to the very, very beginning of your journey in the content creator space. Don't miss out any important events, any important people. Like when you became, when you knew, it was like, all right, I'm starting to become a star, et cetera, et cetera. So yeah, like when you initially started, I'm saying from the very beginning, like zero subscribers on your own channel or like first fan cam and things of that nature. Yeah, like I used to odd fan cams in like 15, 16 for Chelsea fan TV. No, it wasn't Chelsea fan TV. What was the channel called at the time? Chelsea Fans Channel. That was okay, it. Okay. She's like the odd fan cam there, but they were never really consistent with it or they would only be there for like 10, 15 minutes and dip. So I started doing it on 100% Chelsea. Um, I remember I used to just go on there after every home game yeah. and then just see the comments, see what people are saying. Most, most of the time, people just agreed with everything I was saying. And then I remember Sammy, big up to Sammy. He was one of the producers there at the time. He said, brother, you should try to do this a little bit more. Try and get a bit more involved in the channel because people like listening to you. So I was like, okay, cool. And like this was like pure positive, Lewis, because it was 16-17. We were top of the league, 13 wins in a row, breaking records left, right, and center. It was the real good old days where we were just cooking everything in sight. Yeah. So we go through that season, doing most of the fan cams and everything. I I meet AFTV for the first time before the 2017 Cup final. I think it was Robbie, DT, Troops. They brought Claude and Ty along as well. Rest in peace yeah. to Claude every Rest single time. Facts. Um, 17 18 is when I started getting involved more because a lot of people left 100% Chelsea. And it was literally just me and Louis. I remember I was doing okay. titles, I was doing the cameras for the fan cams, I was doing the match day vlog, I was doing the edits. Like my match days after a game would be like six, yeah. seven hours long. Just getting so you everything. Wasn't, yeah, so you wasn't really interested in it from the beginning. So when you started it in 15, 16, because it wasn't really no, consistent. I was, even though the chat 15, was 16, with you. no. Yeah. 16, okay. 17, I was thinking about, but I just yeah. didn't really know what to do like, except vlogging. So I was just starting off of that. So what was it that, when did the penny drop? When was it that made you go, you know what? All right, I'm going to run with this, like in 16, 17. Like, I'm going to do this consistently and start vlogging and fan cams, et cetera, et cetera. Um, what was it? I remember I just said I wanted to get more involved with the channel and then Louis was like to me, okay. so what do you want to do? And my dumbass hadn't really thought that far ahead. <laughs> so I was like, okay. So what? Hey, I, I, I remember there was this Tottenham fan, Georgia Killia, that was it. I used yeah. to love watching his Tottenham vlogs at the time. So I was like, I want to make something like that. So I'll do vlogging. Started yeah. it. Louis, the lazy shit, never edited anything. So none yeah. of them went out for like two months. Jesus. And then Sammy went and did, did it. And it actually started getting well. Mm -hmm. Then the next season, I did it myself. Because I was like, you know what? I've learned early. I can't rely on any of you lot. So I'm just going to do it myself. Yeah. Then, I, then I had to start doing everything else. Sammy left because he got fucked over by Louis. Mm -hmm. Then I, then me and Lauren's left the year after because we both got fucked over by Louis. Yeah. Then the channel died. He got sacked by Robbie. Damn. And we were on Chelsea Fan TV with Sammy. Because mm -hmm. as soon as me and Lawrence found out we got fucked over by Louis, he was like, well, I'm actually enjoying my time here at Chelsea Fan TV. You lot should just roll through here. And I thought, okay, okay. cool. I mean, you're going to pay me first and foremost. First. That's more than I'm getting over here. So cool. Cool. I'm over. So I, I was on I was on pure vibes FC for the rest of eighteen nineteen, yeah. and as soon as that was done, I was like, "Yep, I'm out, peace." Lou okay. was pissed off about it, but while that was happening, Robbie and Tao were taking all of their equipment and all of the socials off him, meeting by meeting, before <laughs> sacking him. So they they longed it out, but they were, but they were also annoyed they didn't speak to us before because they just have us running the channel instead. Oh, and it's a shame because that channel was blowing up at the time. It was just losing. Yeah, because that's what I think I, I think that's where I first seen you was on that channel. Yeah, that was where I first seen you. It would have been that channel. Yeah, it would have been. I remember the first time I met Saeed there was after I think you guys beat us in the FA Cup. 
It was like interim Ollie times and everything. Oh, jeez. Uh, like, yeah, me and Louis were having hella arguments that season. He wasn't getting along with my ex at the time, and both of them were just unbearable as hell. <laughs> um, <laughs> it's crazy. He, he was he was trying to control me bunning zoots at games. Like, I was like, bro, go away, man. I, half this channel is being run through me. Like, I don't I don't care. If and I want to go he, bun the zoo, I'm going to go bun the zoo. And he's trying to stop. And what was his reasoning for trying to stop you from, from smoking? It, it, like, decreases productivity. And I'm like, you ain't vlogging. I know I can vlog fine after bunning a zoo. That's how, that's how fan cams, yeah, I'm not bunning a zoo before fan cams. I, yeah, I, yeah, like, yeah. I can't be bothered for that. But, but on the way to the game, yes. Yeah. After I've got my actually no, not even after I got my vlog sort. After the fan cam, yes. Yeah, of but course. He's you just a line. control freak. Okay. Right, right, right. I got you. I got you. I hear you. And then that's, that's why there was like seven, eight people on that channel at the start mm. of eighteen nineteen, and then there was nobody by the end because everybody just got sick of Louis. Okay, did that make you, did the whole issues with the channel and Louis make you want to stop? Or was you like, you know what, let me just move elsewhere and continue this? Did it affect yeah, you? Yeah, I was going to keep going, regardless. Okay, so you was, you, regardless, well, I you saw was like this okay. channel, it was just like, I never really started pushing on my personal channel until lockdown. Okay. That was when I was like, okay, I ain't got anything to do. Let me actually focus on this a little bit. I do wish yeah. I'd started a few years earlier. Like, if yes. I had the knowledge I have now... Back in 2019, I'd be on like 150k by now. Hindsight's but, a hey, wonderful better thing. late than never. Yeah, it's all, hindsight's a wonderful thing, though. Like you said, better late than never, and now you are thriving. So then, what was it like first being over, and then you've left, and you've gone to Chelsea Fan TV? What was that like? Did you like? Did you feel the elevation in regards to the views, analytics, getting recognised, etc.? No, it wasn't even that. It was just well, I'm getting paid first and. First off, <laughs> that helps. <laughs> there's that. Um, working under Sammy was amazing. Sammy's a very chill boss, mm. fair as well. So, like, it was just improvement all around. Sophie was just professional, easy yeah. to work with. All I was there for was just to literally just do do my vlogs as usual and do previews yeah. with her, and that was it. But okay, yeah, I enjoyed my my time working with them a lot. But then they both left to go do their own thing. Sophie got the OnlyFans bag. Sammy, I think, has been working for the BBC or something like that since. But um, they're doing well with Alex. Alex Alex is running the channel really well Alex, the last Alex two seasons. I think Alex is brilliant. Shout out to Alex. I think he's very, very good at what he does. Yeah, yeah shout out to Alex. Yeah. I think he's, Big up to Alex, although the Poch opinions, no. no yeah, that's but, wild. Oh he was, he oh tried to sell. He tried to tell me Mount was a good player a couple of seasons ago. But here we are. So yeah, but shout out to oh. Alex each and every time. Oh, not not the fan cam when we last played you because I got interviewed by the I can't remember the guy's name. Charlie, the guy. Charlie, yeah, shout out to Charlie. It was Charlie this season and the season before it was Alex, and he was trying to tell me about Mount. And I was like, Mount don't start for you lot, and you lot are tenth. What are we doing here? Wait, hey, just yeah, because I remember you beat us four one. I was like, I don't care. We're leaving Mason yeah. Mount here. We've that's Mason all that Mount. I was I was pissed, still pissed, but here we are. Here we are. So then you've gone over to Chelsea Fan TV. You said obviously it was where Sophie was there working. Um, what was the name of the guy again? You mentioned Sammy. Sammy, that was it. Sammy was there. Then they've left. So then was you like, okay, West, uh, West um, was it the same thought process? Just keep going with Chelsea Fan TV. Yeah, by that point, like I'd, I've been streaming on my channel for like two years by, by okay. now. So but I was comfortable where I was. It's just keep growing with both channels. So yeah. look at the new ownership. Had nothing wrong with them. Like they were all calm. And yeah, we've been very consistent since then. The only problem this season has just been no Europe. Same thing for the players as for us. Dead <laughs> no, yeah, of that. Is, yeah, there's no there's no midweek game to talk about, whether it's Champions League or whether it's Europa League. So mm -hmm. when was it for you you became you was like, I'm getting no array? Like, you was like, right, like, I'm getting right. Because just to clarify, people, anytime I'm with Lewis, I've been with Lewis in London, Manchester, thing, Liverpool as well. Any place we've been, Lewis gets recognised crazy. It was like Carnival, the amount of times, oh, Chelsea, you know what I'm saying? Constantly. Carnival was long, bro. Carnival was crazy. I thought it was bad for me, but it happened to Lewis. So, oh, you're the Lewis guy. It happens in Manchester, like I said. So, when was it a certain thing that happened? Was it working with someone where you're like, Oh, I'm starting to get notoriety in this thing. My brand is growing. I'm at a certain point. I don't know, you know. 
like I want to say maybe when I started working with AFTV a little bit. Okay. Or around 17, 18. So yeah. remember 17, 18, I was losing my head a lot. <laughs> that was pre-weed as well. So like I, I had no coping. <laughs> It was just okay. I've got to deal with a Bakayoko and William disaster class. I just got to firm it. Great, That's crazy. William here, the first man from Corners. <laughs> William Victor Moses. Like v Victor Moses was good for one season. That second season, he was a bag of crap. <laughs> yeah, that that season was a mess. But like the vlogs were doing crazy views. The fan cams were doing a madness as well. Eighteen nineteen was crazy too. Because obviously we were doing we were just stinking it out away from home losing yeah. at the emirates we got battered 6-0 at, at city 4-0 at bournemouth i Damn. think there was another game in between that that we lost everton mm. um wolves yeah i remember that wolves vlog like we got stranded on the other side of birmingham because scott's car got a flat tire big up Fuck. scott big so up we scott had to leave time. scott and louis there Get an Uber, Jesus. 40 quid to get up to Wolves for half time. We're one nil up just to see us bottle it and lose 2 1. <laughs> I was fuming. I was like, why did I bother? Also, I had three of my mates, including my ex's ticket at the time, and they all had to go yeah. get the bears. So it was just a mess all around. There were so many L's that night. <sighs> yeah, that's crazy. That is nuts for real. Mm -hmm. for real. So there wasn't so outside of a yeah, let's go there, actually. AFTV. How did that come about? And what was it like working with AFTV? Because they're the juggernaut at that point. They are... That's the creme de la creme. Like, if you're on there, you're getting seen by millions upon millions. Um, At the time, I, I thought it was just because Louis knew them. Now mm. I know that they own the channel. And like they were just working with 100% Chelsea for every single Arsenal-Chelsea match. Which, yeah. again, makes sense, but makes sense. that's how I got to know them. I met them for the 2017 Cup Final. Yeah, I remember how gassed we all were going into that game and we got absolutely cooked for 90 <laughs> minutes. Should have lost 6-1. I, I, was, I wasn't even angry. I was just there in shock. Like, you lot really came to this game hungover. Fez, yeah. I can't even say nothing. You all just broke, the, broke records winning the league. Like, Jesus. it's just annoying for whatever. Whatever. And their first goal was bullshit. Offside and a handball. But thank you, Anthony Taylor, as usual. Anthony, Anthony Taylor tax. We know all about that. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, working with AFTV. And what was it like working with, because he's mentioned troops being over there, obviously other big content creators, but other people you've worked with as well. Like, how did, like, a troops, for instance, like, first meeting him, what was that like? I'm presuming, like, me and many others in the chat, you was a fan first and foremost. Oh, you yeah. A while now. This is years. Like, the first time I met them, I was like, Rod, that's actually troops, you know? That's Claude. Mm. Crazy. Yeah. But then you just get to know them and they're just the exact same people just off camera. <laughs> On and off that. camera, they're the exact... Like, Claude and Ty will start arguing over anything. <laughs> they like that. That is right. not Claude just something for the cameras. These men would start arguing over where to go for lunch. Like, just any random thing. And you just sit there and watch and just be like, Rah, so... Like, I already knew this wasn't for the cameras in general, but it's like, no, you don't just argue over anything. <laughs> anything they just clarify, it's beyond football. DT would football. be just there venting about something <laughs> or just on his phone, and troops would be billing it. <laughs> yeah. So, so that's why you and troops got on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. you he's smoking, you smoking, so automatically you matter. <laughs> like... And Louis just sitting there looking annoyed because I'm bunning zoots. See, that's crazy. I know that. Yeah, like especially when you're being productive and the channel is booming. That that is that is crazy for facts. That's, and especially when you love drinking alcohol all the time. The one thing I say, you you can't you can't get at me about weed when you're drinking something that could actually kill you. That's true. Something that you could drink a lot of and you you literally will not be able to do your job. I could bun about three zoots, I'll be fine. Yeah, you're still gonna be productive. You're productive. If you you're have about four or five drinks and you're a lightweight, you're not gonna be able to do that. Oh, if you reach a certain limit with alcohol, you're not going to be able to do your job. Weed, I could keep going. I could keep mm. going. I'll be fine. No, nah, I fully, I have to fully hear that. Fan comes. Was there any infamous fan come? Like, what was your first viral fan come? The one that blew up in regards to numbers and got notoriety, and you was receiving feedback, whether it was positive or quote unquote, you're being negative, even though he's probably just criticizing Chelsea for a literally first match day of seventeen eighteen. 
when we lost three <laughs> people Burnley at home. I remember I had the fucking Bukayo Saka tips and everything. It was an absolute mess back then. But I remember we were 3-0 down at half time. Mm. Came back 3-2, but still lost the game. I was fuming. And I was like, look, I don't care if we're Premier League champions. Yeah. If we don't pattern this shit up, we're not making top four. It's going to be a problem. I remember that game, actually. I remember that game. And I remember everybody was ripping me. Like, what's this guy trying to talk about? He's pretending to be AFTV and everything. We finished fifth that season. <laughs> we finished fifth. That was the f- that was the first match day of the season. And that, that wasn't just it. There was a few others. Oh, there was the Tottenham others. one. Both mm-hmm. ones where he lost 3-1 to Tottenham because my vlogs just had me giving Deli Ali hella abuse. Um... T- 4-1 Watford. Remember, Sidemen reacted to that a few years ago. The that 3 0 lost to Newcastle. Yep. Yeah. I remember that one, and that one was another one. Mm. Man United's away. I don't f- yeah, no, that one didn't do too much. I remember we lost that one 2 1. I think it was Lukaku or Lingard who scored the win. No, they both scored. They both yeah. scored. Palace away. That was it. Yeah, that was it. Too. I said Batshuayi was as useful. Uh, was as useless as a condom with a hole in it. <laughs> that was the first one that went viral. That was it. Even more than the Burnley one at the start. Yeah, I remember. Like it was crazy. Is I remember that Burnley game, and I remember the sidemen responding to it. I think because De La Faye responded to it in regards to you. Yeah, he responded a few months. Was like, rah, this video is still surfacing. Yes. Legendary man, that's you make classics, family. That's what it is. Your content is classic, so people are gonna keep reverting back to them months later and years later, and that will live on as well. That yeah, I do miss vlogging to a point, but I just can't be bothered for Poch Ball. Can't be bothered <laughs> well, for it well, right We now. will talk about Chelsea currently and Poch. About to say, uh, God, this this field at home as well. Do you remember that one? Yes, actually. Yeah, because we drew one one. It was the last home game of the season. We needed to win to at least have control of the top four race. Yeah. And we just missed chance for fun. And they got an equaliser, which kept them up in the table. Well, kept them up in the league for that season. Yeah. That one was before the Newcastle 3-0 loss on the last day of the season. So it was a really shit end. Yeah, that's so yeah, there was, a, there was probably a few more. I don't remember for the life of me. But 17-18 was the first one where we really started to blow up. So that's when it then it went viral. And you seen that in regards mm. to not only the views, numbers, your social numbers as well, interactions. What was that like? Because like, that would have been a new experience now, receiving more replies because you became, and still are, you're a head honcho of that. You are the fan cam I look for. I'm going Chelsea fan TV now. I'm going to, and back then, I'm going to your fan cam. So what was that like becoming the face of it, becoming the go-to guy? Bro, I'm still not used to it. Like, it's yeah. mad when, like, when people still come up to me and say they enjoy watching my content. So, like, raw, okay, fairs, appreciate that, bless. But yeah, it, it's mad. It's it, it's weird realizing that. But I think I never really realized the amount of people who listen to my content. So yeah, to everybody watching, as always, big up, love you, man, every single time. But yeah, it it takes a lot of getting used to. I feel like some people are more comfortable with it. I wouldn't say I'm not comfortable with it, but it always catches me out, if anything. It does, and you became so. Then obviously that being then the big that then being the big season where you blew up, the channels blew up. What was your plan? What was your thought process that pre that uh, that summer in regards to the channel? Was it double down? More content, more previews, more vlogs, fan cams, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. Did were you looking at it to expand or was you like, you know what, let's just keep going? Or was there more thought going? Was there more thought gone into it? I just wanted to keep get making 100 percent Chelsea grow. That was my main plan at the time. And then mm-hmm. just turn that into a job. But then I didn't deep that the biggest problem was Louis in charge of it all. So I started focusing on Chelsea fan TV and then I just started focusing on my own channel. Lockdown gave me enough time to build that up and just start focusing on that more since. Yeah, because we wanted to get to that in regards to not only Chelsea Fan TV, but your own channel, because you've had it a number of years now. When did you was when was you like, okay, let me take that seriously? And what was the thought process that went into that? Because it seems you're very much just like, you know what, this gonna work. Let me just so was there much thought into it in regards to a plan with your own channel? Or was you like, all right, let me just work alongside Chelsea Fan TV? And this is going to work. 
See, for me, like, me and Sammy were having back and forths over growing Chelsea fan TV because Chelsea fan TV had a lot of simp followers at the time because of Sophie. Mm, And I was like, that that shit ain't sustainable, bro. Like, I get it. You you can slap her in a video and you're going to get views, but I look at the watch time, the watch time reeks. Because they're, they're not staying to listen. Like, they're just there to look and then they're there to bounce. So I'm saying, like, we, we need to be doing a little bit more. We need to be trying to add, add different people in. And it just wasn't really working out. So I was starting to focus a bit more on my channel. Mm-hmm. And then by that point, Sophie had already left anyway because she was making so much on OnlyFans. There wasn't a point. But by then, I'd already started doing videos regularly. And that was just it at the start. But then after we lost 3-1 to Arsenal, I thought, fuck this. I can't be asked to do a video. I'm going live instead. Just been streaming ever since. That's just it. <laughs> I just stumbled on streaming backs. And I was like, I can't be asked to record a video after this. I'm just going live. I can't be bothered. That's fair. It seems that's very much been... Uh, there's a theme here with that. In regards to you're just like, all right, this is going to work. And just stumbling across things and be like, yeah, let's let's try this. Because mm-hmm. you are talented and the people you have a name and the people that like doing watch alongs yeah. on Chelsea Fan TV and call in shows during lockdown. I remember I do a video on my channel in between that. But I just yeah, again just thought week. that's taken an hour to set up. I'm pissed off, I'm fuming. Mm. Just sent the link to my mate Ben, who was on the stream as well. I was like, come on, we're just going live on here. Fuck this. Just vented for like an hour or two and then went straight into that call in show. Like the match days during lockdown used to be about eight hours long mm. with the with the uh watch along then the review then the call-in show that would that would just be as long as however many people wanted to hop on and there's only so many times you can hear the same opinion on repeat True. or you're just like uh oh, so what's your thoughts on the game mate what's your thoughts on it? oh you thought he played well okay that's a new one all right cool cool Genuinely just wanted like a five minute break to go for a zoot, but I knew I couldn't do that. <laughs> so then what was the switch from okay, no watch along not doing watch alongs on Chelsea fan TV, doing watch alongs on your own channel, no longer doing the fan calling shows, going live? Was it just again stumbling across it and you was like, This works? No, like we stopped doing that after I mean once fans got allowed back into grounds, so and then I was just going to all the Chelsea games. That or I was on DR Sports because I was doing a lot of watch longs on there in the 21 22 season. Yeah. Um, Then I stopped working with DR Sports and then I was just doing fan cams and just going to Chelsea games last season. Yeah. And this season, I just can't be bothered for it. (laughs) Can't be bothered for it. That Man United game was my turning point. I was like, nope, I'm done. I'm done. I'm actually, I'm finished. Yeah. So bad that day. I couldn't believe it. I've been to three games since then. Preston, yeah. I think Villa when we drew nil nil, mm. and the Carabao Cup final. That's it. I might go to the Cup final. I said he might, you know, crazy. Hey, big up to a gal in the chat as well. Is. Shout out to a gal. That's okay. okay. That's big, gal. big up to a gal every single every single time before we carry on though people run up the likes people run up the likes don't worry i get to any super chats in a second as well but run up the likes there's over 140 people here like check one two one two we continue to share across all the socials every social media app you are active on and subscribe here to sarcasm city tv roll to 11k make sure you subscribe to lewis's channel carefree lewis g the link is in the title as well so when did the idea come about and i commend you for this highly because your life your daily live stream Chelsea live stream not only the way that you start it and it's just you talking to the camera which is an idea that I was like I, I need to incorporate that and I did use that and still do to an extent but less now mm. but I actually I've used that and I, I always salute you for that as well and then you'll bring everybody on and it's absolutely chaotic but it's organized chaos and it's entertaining chaos where did the idea come from for that? Where you're like, all right, I'm going to start off the stream, just me. And then all of a sudden I'm going to, I'm gonna, then going to bring all these people on and just let it be chaos. And it's, but it's controlled chaos. It's like a, you know what it's like? It's like a Royal Rumble for wrestling fans in the chat. Like it's chaotic. There's a lot of people in the ring. There's so much going on as there's so much going on on your streams, but you're still in control of that. 
Where was the idea where you came to mix those two things together for your daily streams? Um, I remember those people saying that they don't get to hear my opinion as much because I always start with the panel. So I, I think it was... People. What game was it? It might have been when we lost 4-0 to Arsenal in that friendly. Yeah. Well, I just started it by myself and I just was ripping everybody for about 40 minutes and people were like, yeah, stick to this format. Stick to this. This works. Mm. I was like, okay, cool. No, no no, one complained. Alex moaned for a little bit at the start because he weren't getting the link early enough. But now everyone's cool with it. <laughs> now everyone's cool Shout with out it. Alex. <clears throat> yeah, big up, Alex. And what but yeah, I love, I, I love the setup of it as well. I, I keep trying to add more and more people into it as well. Just try to shake things up a little bit. Yeah, but different opinions. Yeah, different opinions because the clashes are always amazing and they seem to pop up out of nowhere. Every time I say it's a quiet news day, I don't expect anything. Something <laughs> pops off and everyone's just arguing over some craziness. It's chaotic. And that's why I said, and how do you manage to, like I said, it's, or I've never seen anything like it in this content creator space where it is absolute madness. It's like, it's more than a Royal Rumble. It's like, it's like, Falls count anywhere hardcore matches, but there's like 40 people involved in it. But yet you still manage mm. to you still manage to control it enough that viral moments come out of it. How do you how do you manage to do that? I was gonna say I don't really do much. You do something, fam. Trust me, you're not giving yourself enough credit. You do something because I've seen no, because these men all just start chaos. arguing between themselves. And I was <laughs> yeah. about raw, so we just stumbled into this then. Okay. All right, cool. But that's it. Because if you cut it off, it would stop. But you know, I've watched you where there's times you'll let it go in regards to an argument and there's times you'll cut it off and go, no, no, no. How do you know when to cut I it off? I rarely or not? cut it off. But it works. Trust me, family. I think it, it just depends on how wild it is. And okay, it's got to okay. be really wild. Like Klazref talking about some crazy Yeah, do some crazy things. Like, look, even they like, even say that. This. Klaz ref, there's a different level with Klaz ref, so you yeah. don't even know. Even his normal stuff are mm. weird, is weird as hell. Mm. But his extreme stuff, boy, crazy. Yeah, it's, it's look, Danish Maldives. Oh, yeah, yeah, just one, one at, at a time. time. That's it. One that's at a time, and that's another thing again that I've said, I've I've heard you say, and I'm like, yeah, boom. Like I've, I've admitted people, like the one at a time. I used to do it on Man United's more where it's more solo dolo, the banner. They're all things I see Lewis do. And I was like, yeah, and there's other things I've incorporated and put my own spin on it because you you watch what works for other people and especially people who are at the level you're trying to get to and be like, all right, how can I incorporate that type of thing? Because like I say, what you do in regards to the chaos, I couldn't do. But you're just so cool, calm and collected as it's going on. That's the craziest part. Half the time I'm just baked off my head too. <laughs> just, yo, but it works. Like it works because... There's no one else that gets that many viral moments and clips with that many people on. Because you got sometimes seven, eight, nine, ten people on the stream. And more often than not, how often to me, I don't see that from any other channel. I do not see that where there's nine, ten people on the stream and there's so many viral moments consistently. Where you're still getting great conversation or actually great debate, I should say. So that's credit to you. Because you've created an environment that works for your family. Trust me. You know, yeah, Dan, you know, it's just the right panelists as well. You got the right people in there. You know how to scout though, because everyone can't get on the channel. You know what I'm saying? Mm. Like that. That's what well, I, type do, I do. Is. Like to try and let people in every now and then. Yeah. Just well, I get that. That's, you never know. That last time we did that, we got Jimmy, and he absolutely flamed everyone inside. Shout out Jimmy. Shout out Jimmy. That's the one I need to get. Big up Jimmy. Jimmy. I'm gonna get him on here on a regular basis. I just gotta get the right oh, show. Oh yeah, that'll be a sick yeah. show. Yeah. already spoke to him about it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's just. You know, dotting all the I's crossing all the T's. Yo, fam, that shit is already too long as it is. If I bring in a third panelist, you know, that show will be three, four hours. Like, that's what people say. Oh, why not? Because let's keep saying that to me about the Yardman show. Oh, why don't we find a Jamaican Arsenal fan? One, I don't know a Jamaican Arsenal fan. Two, with me, you, and Kaneki, this show is already two and a half hours long. If we add another one, this going to be, it's going to be a 90 minute game plus extra time plus penalties. You know what I'm saying? Like, for real, for real. Like, that's what it is. But now nah, I'm definitely going to get him on there as a special guest. But shout out to Jimmy. But I've got an idea for a show. Just a few, another panelist that I'm looking for. And big up to Matisse in the cut as well, man. He says, come on, brothers. Right, G, that 10 pick up my G. 
hey, shout out to Matisse. You will see him on here at some point as well. People, no exclusive people. Matisse will be here tomorrow, 10 p.m. UK time. So Matisse is one. So you're getting one at 4 p.m. You have to wait and see who that is. But 10 p.m. Matisse will be on. So two Sarcasm City specials tomorrow. It says, come on, brothers, that 10K looking, Chris. I appreciate it every single time, Matisse. But yeah, in regards to <clears throat> what I was talking about, and you've managed to go into that chaos lane because even your watch alongs are like that where you've got multiple people but it's still and you seem to have the right blend like i say man you need to give yourself more credit because a lot of people couldn't do that i'd struggle i know that. i had that but also to a panelist gotta shout you out as well because the channel the channel's grown partly because of you man so if you're watching big up man we don't ever forget you guys and your effort Facts, facts, one hundred percent, without doubt. And yeah, man, every time Matisse big up to Ryan as well. So the channel's going from strength to strength because during lockdown, do you remember round about how many the subscriber mark what you started at? Um, was before lockdown, eight k. Okay, and now you're what rolled to forty k now. No, nah, no. Um, I think we're on 43 now. See, I think. geez, see, my astronomical number. I got the numbers wrong. Yeah, double check that, family. We're going to get these numbers yeah, yeah, right. 43k. We're going to get these numbers right. Oh, so you're rolled to basically 45k slash 50k. So what was that? Well, I'm the sort of guy. I'm never satisfied. Like, I want more. Yeah, of course, fam. Yeah, I should have been on more as well. But again, better late than never. You're going to get there, family. Trust me. Like, trust me. And that's the, the drive that you have. And I seen that when we were streaming together when we did that City Chelsea game. Like, Oh, this is different. This is different. Like, without doubt. Like, the ability to do that, to, to not only maintain that energy, but keep a, keep an eye on everything that's going on, the chat, the soundboard, engaging the game. And then even after you're doing a fan cam for Chelsea Fan TV, afterwards you're answering questions on the game as well. But what was the growth like during lockdown? Because to go from 8K to 43K is an absolutely ridiculous jump. So what was that journey like and blowing up even further? Oh, yeah, it was great. It also it came at the right time, too, because you had the whole chaos with Lampard in his last few months. Then you had us win the Champions League. And, like, the six months after that, we were absolutely cooking as a football club, but we were also getting really good views as well. Which, again, kills the idea that you only do well when your team's losing. No, you, can, you do well when your team's doing well or losing. It's one or the other. So... That's kind of where it started. Actually, to be honest, like Chelsea's just been chaotic in general the last three or four years. So there's always been something that's kind of boosted you up on the algorithm. Either Lampard or winning the Champions League or Club World Cup winners to being sanctioned to Tuchel being sacked <laughs> to nearly going bankrupt to yeah, like Potter through. being sacked. Mm -hmm. Like, it's a lot. There's been a lot. Got a lot going on. You have a hell of a lot going on. You do. Uh, like, that's why I look forward to your streams. Uh, like, genuinely. Like, I'm like, all right, let's see what Lewis has got to say. What's going on at this mess? I'm, lo I'm locked in. I'm fully locked in. Like, for real, for real. Before we continue, though, people, before we continue, let me just get to a couple of these super chats. Big up to C24 every single time. It says, big up the Snow Bunny Hunting Manum and my East African Broski Lewis, two of my favorite YouTube content creators, although Flawless switched up after 10K. Hey, big up C24. Love, man. Much appreciated. Big up every single time. Big up to Winter Surfer every single time. Says, yeah, Lewis, get controls of these streams with the laughing emojis like you in there up, causing man. chaos. Big up to De Niro, who says, big up Lewis, top man. Shout out to De Niro. And big up to Anderson, St. John Ingleton, says, flawless, big legend. Chelsea fan born in Chelsea as well. A hey, big up for the super chat. Appreciate the kind words as well. So, yeah, in regards to, like, so from the jump, so obviously all the way from the start, from 100% um, from Chelsea, Chelsea fan TV, you vlogging, fan cams, your own channel, then your own channel blowing up even more during lockdown as well I have to ask someone did mention it in the chat what was it like signing the shirt when someone outside the ground asked you for your autograph yeah that was weird i didn't expect that oh, goodbye. like i was telling him like bro I i'm literally gonna ruin your shirt but then he said like i got mount on the back so it's a bit useless already so i was like, <laughs> all right cool whatever let me sign it might as well but hey so i like i don't know what you're gonna do with that autograph but go for it bro Go oh, fam, that's it. gonna be worth some money. That's gonna be worth some money soon. Don't get mistaken. Hundred percent. the rent. Someone tried to get me to auto. Someone asked me to autograph their ticket. I was See? again like, 
I, I don't know what you're gonna do with it, but okay, Man, money's. I don't mind. That's a that's a money. I'm telling you. Look at the rate. Hey, if they if you they can get money off my autograph, I need to know how so I can start doing yeah, it. it. Is because you, the way, like you said, you're not sad. You literally went family from eight k to forty three k in the space from the start of lockdown up until lockdown and now. Look at the growth. Mm. So you're gonna get to fifty k, eighty k. 100k and so forth then the plaque comes in then more of the brand deals come in you really do and that's why it's important to do these shows because you sell yourself short and i've told you this privately i'll tell you this publicly you wanted the best out here period that's why that's not normal how many content creators are out here getting asked for their autograph look at the chat and this is what this show is all about is giving giving people their flowers and i get it because you're a driven individual and you're thinking how far along you've got to go. And you have goals and aspirations and mm -hmm. things you're trying to accomplish. But don't forget, fam, how far along you've come on the journey. Look at all I, I feel like until I get that plaque, I'm always going to be thinking, nap. I need more. But I'm because of your time. mindset, after the plaque, it'll be the next thing and the next thing and the next mm -hmm. thing. And that's right. And I want the next hungry. plaque. Yes. And that keeps you hungry. However, what you're doing is not normal, family. You know what I'm saying? The accomplishment. It's like, as a team, I don't know, winning a treble fantastic accomplishment of course you want to go again and win more trophies but that's still a fantastic accomplishment you know what i'm saying type of thing especially in yeah. such a stacked market because there's a lot of people there's a lot of content creators you're one of the select few who's extremely successful for there's a reason for that for real i did think being one of the few guys to come out of lockdown with a positive was that's crazy that's crazy yeah. Like it, it's true, family, because like I mentioned in the intro, you was a part of the first wave. And now you're here with the second wave of content creators. So that's me and others who were after the whole non-live streaming, fan cams after the game, previews, vlogs. So you got you, you got troops, you got rants, you got expression, Saeed, etc. etc. All the original. Right, because even at that time, I thought I was a little bit of a small fry back then. But everybody would kind of look like a small fry to a, a troops or a rants when these men are doing maybe what two yeah, hundred. Everyone just remembers on, AFTV on the back in the day because AFTV was the first. But don't sell yourself short, like in regards to not only was you a part, a key part of that first, um, first wave because you worked with everyone from that wave. Who don't know you from that first wave? Who have you not worked with that I just mentioned? Mm, That's it, fam. Adam McCola. Actually, no, I, I did one thing with him in 2020. See? There's nobody who, one, you actually, haven't yeah, actually doesn't don't know, know. You. There's, That's what I'm saying, fam. There's a reason for that. So not only are you a part of that class and part of the first wave, the second wave now with the live streaming, so the likes of myself and all the other people that you see, you've lasted from then up until this point and working with me and working with others. And that's testament to you. How many of the first wave are no longer around or no longer successful? You managed to transcend error. Like a lot of There's people don't transcend the error. Take that's crazy. That's a, that's crazy. Facts, when man. You... Like you gotta put it together. I get it because you're from I'm looking from the outside looking in, whereas you're on the inside of the situation, so you don't see it that way. A lot of people don't transcend their error. A lot of people from that first wave ain't here no more or aren't successful anymore. And there's a reason for that. You manage like fan cams and vlogs are one thing. But then, all right, can you transition to the live stream? And you've trans look at the transition you made because you was already popping before it. And now look, you get what I'm saying? Mm. Yeah, trust me, fam. Yeah. Like, Give people their flowers. Like, see, you got people saying stuff like that. AK, big up to you. Since Shit, Lewis, big up, my, my guy, favorite man. Chelsea fan, TV content creators. Like, for real, someone mentioned it here. You're legit our Chelsea fans AFTV equivalent, which you are. And this is why I said... I know, but that's Chelsea, also because we suck right now. Yeah, but that's a testament to you because you go to Chelsea Fan TV, what's the fan cam on the biggest numbers with the biggest interaction that everyone's looking for is yours. Yo, where's Lewis's fan? I do it. Chelsea, look. Ah, right, yeah, yeah. That's where's Lewis's fan cam? Like, I watch others. I watch facts. Scott, if he's there, for example. I see what Alex is saying after the game. Maybe if there's an interesting... Maybe if there's one with bigger numbers than usual. Even when I'm on there, like even when I've been fortunate enough to be on there because of you. And that's another thing as well. You made a gateway for not just me, but a lot of other people as well you've put on. Like you mentioned Jimmy, for example. I know Jimmy will talk about you in high regard. A surfer, a Alex, the list goes on and on. The amount of people that you've put in position to 
be successful in this thing because being on your channel is no small feat like shameless fc for example look at neil ryan you know what i'm saying the list goes on come come everyone you see on that on that show you've helped so much trust me i'm telling you family for real for i know me. i always look at it and think they've just been able to make the most of it that's why i never really tried to take anyone's flowers off that what it's not taking their flowers because you've helped them get their flowers like that i get it, you yeah, yeah, I get you. you. You're helping them get their flowers. Like this sarcasm city TV. Like I genuinely meant that when I said that at the start. That I was like, you cemented this for Chelsea fans in particular as this is a cool place to be. This is a great watch. Be here. Because before you, this was more, it was more United based because I'm a United fan. And the other content mm -hmm. creators I had on, Aaron, you know what I'm saying? Obviously, I'd worked with Saeed and worked with Amnuradin. I wasn't working with Rance at that point. But those three in particular, it was like, Oh, United. So it's more United. And there'd be the odd Chelsea fan, odd Arsenal fan, Liverpool. But then when you, I was like, shit, I'm just seeing hella Chelsea Avi's in the chat and still to this day. And this was two years ago. Like a meditator, a medic said it is because a real one like Lewis attracts real people. Facts. See, Big up, my guy, man. Appreciate you. Got you only, see, you got people giving you your flowers, and that's what I'm here to do, and that's what this show is all about. Mm -hmm. And big up to CP as well, who's a prime example. CP, Chelsea, my G. Shout out to CP. Guarantee if we ask CP, he probably found me through you, which he did. Sir for the same, Victor, Prime, all of the Chelsea lot, like all of them. Like, so yeah, man, gotta give you your credit. But in regards to your channel as well, obviously, roll to 50k. What is your plan with it now? Honestly, just just keep going. Like I think maybe I want to start doing a couple more shows as well. Mm -hmm. I want to get a weekly podcast running on the channel. Mm -hmm. But as of right now, like the only thing I just keep thinking is that you just got to keep going, keep staying consistent. Even with um, the international break and everything and the fact that I can barely even stream now because of jury duty, I'm still trying to find ways to just get regular content coming out. No Although like, I know there'll be a day or two when I've got nothing to film and that's okay, but all I'm thinking is just keep going. That's Can't it. stop. Just try new things. Keep doing what works. And yeah, we need to get to 100k as soon as possible. Yeah, you gonna get that's that. The thing. I just I just don't rest when it comes to YouTube. That's one thing I've realized. Your work ethic, family, I'm telling you, this is A1. So you're just looking to obviously carry on doing what you're doing, continue to grow, aim for 100K, which you are going to get, like, without doubt, as you continue to stream, and more shows on your channel. Now, I respect that, because you're live yeah. every and day. And also, family. I've got to sort out the other stuff as well. It's the first year where I'm doing my taxes and everything, so I've had to sort See. that out in the last few weeks. Leveling up. Um, Yeah, just a lot. Just keep... Yeah, that's it. Just keep going. Just keep just going. Keep I want to try get to about... Hopefully 60k by the end of the year. That would be nice. You don't get Although that. I think more realistically is I'm more realistically looking at like 52, 53k. And that's still yeah, 50k is no small feat, fam. That's more than that's fam, that's more capacity than the ground at bridge if you get 50k. You know what I'm saying? I had to put it into perspective. Like, yeah, that's not normal. That'd be real. We should have we should have renovated years ago. Yeah, I hear you. But still, there's most most grounds in the in England ain't 50k. You get what I'm saying? Like that's not that's again that's not normal. But I get it. Your tunnel vision are like 100k, 150, 200. Fully get that. Mm -hmm. But never forget, family, how far you've come along. I'm telling you that right now. Like for real, for real. And so even the chat saying it. Look, what I was talking about. They know that I'm not just chatting. Wait one second. Hold up. Big, hey, up, big up to you that. guys in the chat, man. I appreciate big up Dan you guys. Man. Every single time says G shout out. Right, big, up Dan. big up Dan Silly Man every single time. Look, Danish Maldini, I found flawless through Lewis. Doug Run 66 says, I found you from Lewis. Big up, guys. Chloe says Lewis is the reason why I watch over football content creators. I wouldn't know about this channel if it wasn't him. Anderson says, Facts, you gave us a great voice to express ourselves. TKL says, I discovered Sarcasm City through Lewis too. C24 That's says, honestly, wild. Lewis channel. See, fam, you don't know these things. This is why, I, well, I'll be telling you, because for those that don't know, I tell Lewis this privately all of the time on a regular, regular basis. And I'm glad you lot are in the chat. I just backing up what I already know so he can see this for himself. Like, for real. Like, without doubt. Like, so, yeah, as we were saying about the channel, it's just more about growth. Obviously, you've been working with brands as well, getting the brand deals, the sponsorships. 
jerseys, um, jerseys, FCs, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Mm. Is then are you lo- obviously you're looking for more brand deals? But is there anything in particular you're looking at in regards to that where you're like, all right, I want to work with such and such, or I'd like to work with this type of brand, or you're just like take it as is as the offers come in. I'll I'll be so real. It just depends on what it is because I don't really know what I'm looking for in terms of brand deals. It's just what are you offering me? In all honesty, <laughs> like what are you giving me back? If you're offering me money or something, let's talk. Let's or talk, if you're offering me some some good merch, cool. Yeah, we'll work yeah, from there. Yeah. But like that's all I'm really thinking about when it comes to it. Yeah, I've had a couple, but like, I remember Lee Gunner also telling me about how half of them are fake. And some of them are just like viruses that try to take your whole Gmail account. So I'm trying not to take a lot of them too serious. Yeah, you have to be careful. You have to be very, mm-hmm. very careful with that. Shout out to Lee Gunner each and every time as yeah, well. Yeah, big up. And big up to uh, Jason with the Super Chat says, big up Lewis and hashtag pot chow. And, he put, and the FA Cup is ours. Big up to Jason every single time. Oh, I hope so, man. We're gonna get to that. We're gonna talk currently. We're gonna talk current Chelsea as well. Big up to Gaming for Life for the super sticker. Much appreciated. And again, big up to CP for joining the membership. Link for the membership is in the pinned comment. Before we continue, run up the likes, people. Run up the likes again. Let me check how many likes we are actually on. We are at 111 likes. Not too shabby, but like check one two one two. Let's get up to 150 likes. Hit the subscribe button here. It is rolled to 11k on the channel. Obviously, like we said to Lewis, roll to 50k on his channel. Carefree Lewis G, the link is in the title as well. I get to any further super chats as the, if they do indeed come in, people. But now we've done the time jump, spoke about Lewis's past, etc. etc. But now to current Chelsea, Maurizio Pochettino. Does he have any chance of being a success at Chelsea, in your opinion? Can he turn this around if the owners... Because I think you admit that the the platform and the board and everything around him is, isn't the best, but he should still be doing better. So where yeah. do you stand with it all? <clears throat> he has to be here next season in order to be a success, and I don't want him here next season. So exactly. like as of right now, nope. I've I've seen he's going to be managing Soccer Aid in June. That needs to be his last ever game at Stamford Bridge. Not not respectfully. <laughs> it's, it's Lampard versus Pochettino, by the way. Like th- there's Love zero that. tactics in that game. <laughs> Two of the worst managers in Chelsea history on either side of the dugout. That's an unfunny joke from Soccer Aid, but hey, it is what it is. Just don't injure Hazard before the game. I beg. Because that guy has to go through Potch's training methods before that. That mm. gag contest might kill the poor guy. So, I God knows. But he has to win literally every game okay. for me to even entertain the argument of keeping Potch for another season. And even Fair. then, I don't want that. Damn. Even then, I'm going to think we could have been a lot higher in the table if we didn't balls up the first six months. Yeah, so, that's true. I heard it. Nah. He, he, nah, he can't do anything for me. He can salvage the season, he can get us into the top six and win the FA Cup. We'll say you've salvaged it, but no, nah, I'm not going to want him to stay. Like for me, to, it would have to take me going through next season with Pochettino and for him to give me a completely different Chelsea side mm. for me to even entertain changing my mind personally on Pochettino. But for now, nope. All you can do is salvage the season. You could, you can't change my mind on whether I want you to stay or go. I'll give you credit where credit's due. You did bring on the right people in the last game against Leicester. A bit late. Sterling should have been off immediately. But I'm not going to act like he didn't bring on the right players. Cool. You did yeah. one thing right. Mm. The problem is, is usually just a few things that you get right in a game. And it's not consistent. But hey, we have to see. Do you think the board will sack him? And yeah, that's my first question. Do you think the board will sack him? End of the season, yes. Now I don't know if they're going to leave it till after soccer aid or not. Although well, he's, I, he's I, I don't regardless. Yeah, I think he's finished regardless. Unless, un- if he wins the FA Cup, they might start sniffing some copium and think let's keep him for another season. But I hope not. I really hope not. Because there's there are so many managers up for grabs in the summer. 
mm-hmm. and where we're going to stick with this meaty coach. I'm good. <laughs> I'm good. Give me one sec. I need to switch my charger. No stress, fam. It's all good. No stress. Whilst Lewis um, just switches up his charger, people, run up the likes again, hit the subscribe button. Big up to Anderson St. John Ingleton with another super chat says, we need Poch, but damn, I don't want him. Crazy. But yeah, go on, family. Carry on, carry on. You said we need Poch. That's what Anderson's saying. He's saying we need Poch, but damn, I don't want him. I think he, Is what he, he saying needs, that from um, a Chelsea needs, perspective. Po- yeah, That's Poch confusing. needs. Yeah, maybe Poch needs. Poch needs Chelsea, but Chelsea don't need Poch. Oh, maybe. he's saying we need Poch because there's no one to replace him. Okay. Um. Well, I mean, right now there's still Hansi Flick. I, I'd still take him, but so I've Flick accepted Poch isn't going anywhere till the end of the season. I also think if if he don't go, if he gets sacked in the next few weeks. Our ownership are even dumber than I gave him credit for. Because what will the take you so long? You cannot give me a reason to sack him in two, three weeks that I couldn't have given you two, three months ago. That's fair. So if that happens, I don't even think I could celebrate it. I'd just be fuming. I bet you wasted so much of this season just to do it in April. Why? Why? I, I, you could have done this months ago and I would have credited your ruthlessness and your ability to at least admit you made another mistake. Yeah. But like now, no, that you, you don't get any redemption of sacking Pochettino. It's just, wow, bit late. Well, okay. If they do it at the end of the season, cool, I'll celebrate. Because mm. as annoying as it is, it will at least make a, a little bit of sense. Yeah. But to do it now, you just look dumb. You look dumb, personally. You could have done it in December. Like I said, they should have left him at Old Trafford after that game. They should have. Don't even let him back on the coach. Right. Instead, he's been allowed to go lose in numerous games in embarrassing fashion and still keep his job. So him winning the FA Cup changes nothing for you. Do you think it changes anything in the mind of the board? Mm, Probably. Because we would have got into Europa League and they'll, they'll say that was progress. Okay. Which oh, I, I don't understand. I don't. I don't get. But I. I hope, regardless, they they agree that it's been too much this season. Mm-hmm. But part of me just can't trust their ego in this situation, and I think they'll pat themselves on the back if they win the FA Cup and get the Europa League, and they'll be like, "See, that. yeah, we were correct. We were correct. That's why they've kept Poch for so long. So it's the only thing that makes wrong. sense." You reckon yep. if they don't want to be wrong and they're like... That's why Potter lasts for so long too. Jesus. So when do you start looking... I know you have been, but when do you start looking at the board even more and go, yes, managers haven't been good enough, but the people making these decisions are not good enough. Something has to change. No, like I've already been looking at them. It's just I feel people want to focus on them more than the manager, which if you want to... I'm not going to talk you down from it. Like Mm. They've not done anything to really be defended for. But I do believe a better manager gets more out of this team. And if if we get more out of this team and we're higher up the table, there's a lot less complaints. You're talking about experience to stay higher up the table. So with that in mind, all of this instability and all of these question marks are coming from the stuff on the pitch, which I'm directly looking at the manager first and foremost for. Over the inexperienced players. Because if the players are inexperienced and they need a better structure, they need better game management, they need better mentality from the manager, and the manager doesn't give me any of those three. Mm. So I have to look at the manager first. And that's Mm. not... But the thing is, when I say that, people think I'm deflecting away from the directors. I've never said the directors shouldn't hold smoke. Got you. Never said that. But but people think because I focus so much on Poch, I'm I'm blindly defending Bowley. Yeah. Where I'm defending the directors. No, the directors could be sacked tomorrow. Great. I'm here for it. I don't care. Yeah. But the bigger thing for me is this manager's an idiot. <laughs> and these players are just stagnating until he's gone. So get rid of him first. And like yeah. I would just hope and pray that, that, that they would bring in the right person. I know like they've not done anything to warrant that trust, but I would rather take that risk again yeah. and stick okay. with this manager for another day. So, I don't know. We're not. <laughs> we ain't it. gonna go to the end of the season. I don't know who we're gonna bring in after that. I'd hope it's somebody 
that can get more out of the players. But as of right now, the only thing I know for certain is Poch ain't that guy. Hmm. And people say, like, oh, maybe Pochettino ain't the right guy to lead us to a league title, but he can still get us higher up the table. Well, if you don't think he's the right guy for a league title, why are you being loyal to him? Yeah, why is he here? Surely it well, should that's be. That's it. Yeah. When, when Liverpool brought in Jurgen Klopp and they were mid-table, they believed Jurgen Klopp was the man that was going to take him to the top. Yes, that was the aim. Same thing same, when they same. brought in Pep Guardiola. Same thing when yeah. we brought in Conte. Yes, the aim is the top. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The aim is the you top. think, oh, Poch can at least get us back into top six. Oh, get out! <laughs> like, mm. like, that's the end goal. I... No, it's that's just fair, insane no. levels of copium. Yes, and I see you dealing with that every day. And what's that like having to deal when the manager's clearly underperforming, despite what you think of the players, despite what you think of the board, despite what you think of people making decisions at Chelsea, Poch is clearly not up to the standard of where Chelsea want to go. So what is it like not only being getting pushback in your chat when you're doing live streams, but also, like we mentioned it before, like Alex and fan camps and things of that nature. What is that like? That'd be so that? real. It Go disgusts on. me because this is the exact same mindset that we mocked clubs like Arsenal for having in 2020. The yeah. we we took the piss out of them for having this bozo mindset or they sat in 15th, 16th for the table. Yeah. And here we are drinking the same Kool-Aid that they drank back in 2020. Do you know that like that's the thing that hurts the most? Forget even Pochettino, forget even where Chelsea are. Mm -hmm. It's the fact that some of these fans are okay with it. Some of these fans are accepting, oh, we, we're not in the Roman era anymore, but you'll scream Bowley out. You'll scream Clear Lake out. Mm -hmm. But then when it comes to Pochettino, you'll say, oh, but we're not in the Roman era anymore. Pick a side. Is it an excuse or is it something you're trying to fight against? Mm -hmm. it's, it, you can't have both. You yeah. can't have both. Hmm. You want it to be the Roman era? Well, this guy would have been gone months ago. Probably wouldn't have even been hired. He would have got definitely been sacked if he had been hired. So, like Jeff. That's the worst thing, if anything. Just watching the fans allow and accept and thrive in the standards being lowered. Because be, like, the one thing I knew about Chelsea growing up, the standards were high. Hmm. Like I remember... Ancelotti being sacked because we went trophyless and we finished second that season. We came back from fifth to finish second. And like he still got sacked and that was still looked as, at as a failure. Yeah. Now now we're in 11th saying it's okay. Got a couple injuries. It's understandable. I I get us being in 11th. 11th place because we have a few injuries. Oh, oh, we brought in a bunch of inexperienced players. That's why my team's 11th. Like, it, it's ridiculous. But, like, I learned a lot about my fan base this season. Last season, it was calm. Take the piss and everything. Like, it's the first yeah. time we've seen us be a mid-table club, whatever. Road to 40 points and all that. Let's have a laugh. This season, it's not funny anymore. It's not it's funny. Not funny. Not even a little bit. It's not funny Nah, anymore. people are just accepting bit. this crap, and it's crazy. That is nuts. That it is. And the pushback I see you receive for it is crazy. And I look like, right, it's the aim. Forget where Chelsea are at, like, currently. Whether you think they're of a level to go and compete or win the major trophies. The aim should be that. That's why I always say the aim should be that. You should have a manager in charge that you believe can do that. You should have players in the squad you believe can be at that level. There should be an approach to things where, the, again, aim. Because people have tried to use that against me. Imagine, oh man, someone said that. What was the show? It was the Yardman show. And someone in the chat was like, oh, Manchester United are not of the level anymore of Real Madrid or Manchester City. Well, of course not. Nobody's ever saying that. What I'm talking about is the aim should be that. That's always should be the aim. Same way, even your, you mentioned Angelotti, one of your most successful managers. Mourinho, one of your most successful managers. They fell short at times. They didn't always win the Premier League. But the aim was to win the Premier League. That was always the standard. And same with my Sir Alex Ferguson didn't win every year. Same way Pep, Klopp, any pick a top manager, Wenger, whoever in the Premier League ever. But the aim was always that. So the acceptance of it is crazy. But again, a lot of people, if they have a personal attachment to a manager, will just let things slide. 
Or they're just blind. Or some people are just blinded by their love for the football club. Because a manager's in charge, you should back him regardless. Nonsense. Really is. Never see I, I think it's so, so foolish. So, yeah, in regards to an ideal world for you, Poch being sacked. But, like you said, if you do win the FA Cup, is that not then... Is that then not a double-edged sword? Because if you if you win the FA Cup, not only is there a trophy for Poch, you also potentially get into... Well, you would get into Europe, and then the board will say, yeah, let's keep him for a next season. So what would you like to see? Let's say that happens hypothetically. You win the FA Cup, Poch stays. What would you then like to see next year? Or are you just writing it off from the jump? Sack Poch. <laughs> Genuinely, just sack Poch. I'll go into Europa League. We'll have a good chance of winning the competition. There's two opportunities to get into the Champions League and keep yeah. progressing. That would just be it. Even if they choose to keep Poch, I still think he digs his grave, but just hopefully they'd pull the trigger a bit early. Mm. But honestly, even if even if he even if they do do it early, the fact that he would last past that season would be a failure in itself. He has to go regardless. Loop yeah. like win or lose, get him out. Season's done. Thank you for the trophy. Or if he doesn't win that, thanks for nothing can leave. First, jeez. Okay. So then let's say hypothetically you don't win the you you finish 10th, 11th, don't win the FA Cup. Poch is then sacked. Despite the manager, would you like to see a change in how you're recruiting players? Because it seems to be this, all right, let's go and get the best players 23 and under, or players of quality and potential, rather than not ready-made stars, but more seasoned players. See, here's the thing, like you, you can get young players with elements of experience in the team. Yeah. The bigger thing is the manager. Before we get into any of that, like you need a manager of a competent structure and a manager who can coach and get better out of players. So if you do that first, then like experience will help you. But we're talking about experience just getting to European places. I yeah. I don't necessarily need that. As of right now. Like, I don't mind us going for experienced names. It just depends on who's out there. Because like, we've done the experience thing on the, in the Roman era and we've bought a bunch of flops. You need to bring in the right names. Yeah. Like, I'm, I don't like the idea that our fan base just complains whenever they see anybody young because some young players are actually pretty good. Rather quality. You look at Cole Palmer. Like, he's not necessarily experienced, but he's balling out. Yes. It just depends on the right players that you bring in. That's it first and foremost. Like I've seen inexperienced Arsenal teams make the Champions League semi-finals go into title races. Mm. If you're a good coach, you'll get the best out of the tools that you have. And if that was the case, we wouldn't be talking about experience. Or we would to get into fourth. <laughs> and that's a completely mm. different ball game. I'll hear all of that if we're talking about fourth. Yeah, we're talking yeah. about seventh, mm. sixth. Like, no, I don't need that. Yeah. I've seen Tottenham just lose Harry Kane. The whole Harry Kane and they're pushing for fourth. They are pushing, yes. That is true. That is true. Brighton have yeah. lost how many key players from last season and we still can't go above them in the table. You right? Like, that's why to me, experience to a point is just waffle. Mm. It's just waffle. Get me a better coach. But for some reason, everyone's doing this big defence league for Pochettino because he sounds a little bit emotional and people feel bad for him. So you reckon that's what it is? He's pulling on people's heartstrings. Oh, definitely. It's the only thing that makes a bit of sense. Or other, or fans just want Poch to win something so they can rub it into their Tottenham mates. It could be that. That's a good point. It could be that type of thing. Oh, it definitely. definitely could be. That's why so many fans turned against Poch after we didn't win the cup final. Like, if, if any one game in the last three months has been a turning point for you of Pochettino... You're a disgrace. You're an absolute you... disgrace. Like, we haven't been leaning into that all season. So, would you say the percentage is now more so in the family? And this is obviously a rough estimate, but just from what you've seen, punch in, punch out, what would you say the percentage? Would you say it's 50 50, 60 40? Where would you say it's at? 70 day? 65 35. To punch out. Yeah. Okay. I, th I think Poch out. I think a lot more match going fans have turned against Poch in the last few games. Mm. He still has a vocal group of fans supporting him for some reason. 
they're still there. So I'd, I'd say around 35%, but I think more fans have turned Poch out within the last month. Again, better late than never, but yeah. if we lot, if we moved after United, showed some ruthlessness, he could have been gone time ago. Yeah, and maybe The fact even... he survived United, survived Everton, survived Middlesbrough, survived both Wolves defeats, including the 4-2 at home. Uh, it's just been disgusting, personally, but hey. That's that's where our clubs that's where our clubs got to, man. That's where it's disgusting. And man, Warrior Jay mentioned it about you not going to matches. Obviously, you've been doing watch along, so the content's still been there. Is it you're not going back to matches until Poch is gone? Is that where you're at with it? No, no, no. Like part of it's been because of the taxes and everything as well. So I just yeah. thought, let me just save my money for this season. I, I spent a lot last season too, so I can't be bothered. But I'm going to do a few more games before the end of the season, <clears throat> including potentially the semi-final and hopefully the final. But other than that, nah. Nah, I'm just going to skip everything. Although if Poch does get sacked, I'm going to make it a mission to be at the next game. Just, just as a statement. Just yeah, as a statement. Yeah, Poch is gone, I'm back. You've beaten That's terrorism. Funny. I respect the pay. I really, really do. And do you think you get past... City in the FA Cup semi-final. Ah, oh, God willing. That, yeah, that's all my thoughts for I've said this if from God a Manchester United it, perspective. We will. You need to. I've said this. From a Manchester United perspective, you must. Oh, I hope so, man. You like, must. like well, we, we've got to end their treble. Cool. Yes. Cool. I guess you, it must be done. Real Madrid, because you played... the hands of the blue rubber. Yeah, because you played them three days after the second leg that they play against Madrid. That's the thing. I need that to go to extra time. I need that to go to extra time. Stretch them out a little bit. Tie them out. We might have a little bit of hope. I need. I need you lot to do the business, man. The only problem is we we still have an idiot in charge. You could still balls up the game if we're in control like he did last time. Fez, Fez, and before we close out and everything like that, I gotta ask you about this show because I get asked about it all the time fortunate enough to be one of the quartet on it the back again podcast because it is the one show i get asked about daily mm. it's, when is the live stream if it's before if a game's going on and the live stream's coming up or make sure you say you cook such and such or you say this to lewis or say this to sam or get at troops etc etc and same way recaps and people always showing love so what's that like because for me obviously i'm working with you my big fan of troops the same and the sam's mad done as well so is it like being on the back again podcast permanently because we was all rotating guests and make sure you check out the show with troops the sarcasm city special yesterday as well people great conversation spoke about his backstory up until now like the same way we've just done here with lewis but what's that like being a permanent fixture on that because obviously you've worked with troops many times before oh i love it I've, I've wanted to do a regular show of Troops as well. The fact that we've been able to link up with you as well and to add a Sam into the mix is a great combination. Great combination. That show is going to be going place in the next year or two. I'm very excited to see where that pod ends up. But, yo, it's a good roller coaster. It's just a shame we're, we're doing this while my club's in the mud. If, if we if we ran this in 2021, it, it would have been just that little bit more sweeter. But hey, the one thing like I will stand by is I don't believe my club is finished. I, yes. I think we're just in a bad phase. Mm -hmm. I do believe a lot of our players are just underperforming and I think a lot of it comes down to this manager. And if I'm correct and we get rid of Poch, next season will be a big redemption season for this football club. Mm -hmm. and I, I need it. I, I really need it. And also this FA Cup. I, I'm dying for a trophy. Losing that Carabao Cup hurt. So that felt like my Baku. That oh, genuinely man. felt like my Baku. Even though it was the it's Carabao Cup? Didn't, it's just because we didn't get whooped that it didn't completely feel like it. But it was more like a game that we should have won, a final we should have won, and we just completely fumbled it. Because Arsenal should have won that final on paper. We had about three, four injuries going into that game. Kante playing in a knee brace. Ruben was out. hudson Odoi was out. Jesus. Sorry was beefing Chelsea players the day before that match. <laughs> we were already third, so we didn't need to win. Yeah, like, yeah. We already got into the Champions League. So it all looked like an Arsenal. It all looked like it was leaning towards an Arsenal victory. Yeah, you, we just I popped did. them off the park. Right. Just for fun. 
just bopped them off the park. And like yeah. that's what it felt like with this game. Because people say Chelsea had the chances to win. Like, don't get it twisted. We were only good in the last 20 minutes. That was because Liverpool played three days before. That extra time showing against the, that under-18 Liverpool side is the single most embarrassing thing I've ever been live to witness. Jeez. Crazy. Embarrassing. Actually, no, second, like, still losing in 17-18 to that pointless Palace side who hadn't scored yet. Mm-hmm. That, that That's still up there. But that final, disgraceful. Disgraceful. Damn. And a lot of the individual performances... Like Enzo, for example, like I, I will say Enzo needs a better manager to get the best out of him. Yeah. But after that final performance, I was like, shit, you know what? If people are getting at you, I, I kind of get you it. You can't defend it. I kind of get it. Uh, like, I remember I saw Hamza and Egal going at him on a list I was like, oh, go for it. You know what? I don't yes. even care. Uh, you, you are absolutely stinky in that game. <laughs> that was a final. I still need you to turn up, especially against that midfield in extra time. So it's like I, yeah, I you need more. Out out that team. Yeah, you should be stepping up and balling out. Is there anyone else in that final from the individual player perspective you look at and go? Yeah, I said Caicedo at the time, but I watched it back and I was very wrong. Caicedo was one of our only few good players yet again. Um, Gallagher. Well, like I said, it would be so, if people think I have a Gallagher agenda, it'd be so easy for me to just blame him for the final and be over and done with. I don't even need to just delve into it. Just say, oh, we missed our chances, like everybody else says. But no. Um, who else was poor? <laughs> well, to be honest, there was only three good players. It was Petrovic, um, <clears throat> Petrovic, Caicedo, and Jackson. They were the only good ones. Palmer started slowly. Gusto started slowly. The Sassy and Cole will start slowly. Um, Enzo wasn't good enough. Yeah. Mudrick and Madueki came on and did absolutely nothing. Like it was just terrible all round. Yeah. That I... that's why I don't get people saying, Oh, we should have won that game. Why? We're only good for people, 20 minutes. People just look at the chances. That's what it is. People just look at the chances. That's why I hate. That's why I feel like there is so much gaslighting when it comes to Chelsea this season. There's mm-hmm. gaslighting over our individual players because mm-hmm. we're 11th. There's gaslighting over our games because there will always be a period where we make a high volume of chances and they just blame them instead of actually looking at the whole 90 minute game because half of the fan base just watches those three minute Sky Sports highlights. Yeah, <laughs> gaslighting over the manager because they think the players are the bigger issue. Like this, yeah. this season might genuinely have taken more out of me than last season. Damn. Last season, I could at least just make some humor out of it. This yeah. season, I've been fighting for my life on everything, and it's just it's driven me insane. Until- genuinely, Until- that's why I need the se- I need the season over. <laughs> the season over. Hey, you got the FA Cup semi-finals to look forward to, though. It's not totally over. I'm um, look forward to, but I mean we're, we're playing the whole Man City, in it. <laughs> hey, you must. I ain't trying to see City in. I remember the whole pub for the United Liverpool game was so gassed. They were literally all doing United chants at four three up. <laughs> really? And then we, yeah, yeah, everyone was going United, 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 and that's a Chelsea pub as well. <laughs> that's straight crazy. out of the Leicester game. <laughs> that is crazy. And then we see one and two get pulled out. Coventry City's first up. Everyone's cheering. And then they see Manchester United. Let's go. Never seen a pub just go from up to <laughs> like that. Because we just realized, oh, we got City in it. All of that was for nothing. <laughs> All of that was for nothing. That we went and got nothing. fucking Man City. Because stylistically, you match up well against City. The two games you played, you could argue you should have won both of them in the league. Our Manchester City had favorites. Yes. Do I believe they'll win the game? Yes. However, City have a better Chelsea have a better chance of knocking out Manchester City than Manchester United do. A big up to Vader who said Flawless wants to face Chelsea so bad in the fact. Yeah, because we got a shot. We don't necessarily guarantee do I go into that final and go, we definitely win it. Well, I'll put it this way: we have much more of a chance against Chelsea in the FA Cup final than City. We lose yeah, to City. If we lose to City, I'm drinking before the game. Feels reverse. I'm a United fan. Yes. Like, that's it. Yes, see. 
and you match up style. Like, yeah, you don't need to beat City if that was the case, but like, I hear it. it. Is. I'm drinking before the game. I'm going to go to my pops's and my dad and start drinking before the game if it's a Manchester derby. Because it's like deja vu. Like Saeed tried to say this on his channel and then had to revert back talking about, yeah, revenge. Do you know who we are? Do you know the manager we have? Do you know the team we have? We match up stylistically. We are all wrong for Manchester City. I mean, Manchester City are all wrong for us. All wrong for us. That's why Chelsea, hey, they must. And then we have a chance in the final. Again, when I say we're favourites for that, yeah, is it guaranteed we win? No. But we have a much better chance against Chelsea. If we get City, that's the first final I've ever been... If if it is a Manchester Derby final, it'll be the first final I've never I'm not looking forward to. Because even last year I thought, yeah, we got shot. This year, nah. So you must. I hear it. I'm Chelsea. I do want to see what beats what what comes out. Poch's losing final streak or Mount's losing Wembley record. Yeah, Mount, yo. Nah, it'd be Poch because Mount he don't touch pitch. You know what I'm saying? He gets here, nigga, damn minutes. He don't touch pitch. Nope. Yeah, but that's what worries me. Mason Mount off the bench getting some jammy goal against us. Like, the, it, like the season has been bad enough without that sort of ending. I don't think I'd go live. I just, I just drop a picture at the airport going to Amsterdam and just be like, peace. Yeah, I think you the link. I'll go live after. I was saying, I, I'll go live after. If Mason Mount scores the winner, that would just be ironic. That would be ironic if Mason Mount gets the winner. I actually don't know if I'd be angry or if I'd just start laughing at that point. Just, just turn like, a joker. Season ends. Yeah, that is a joker moment. It is. And to prime you, ask me flawless. You think United would be favourites against Chelsea? And that, yes, I do think we'd be favourites against you. Lot, hundred percent. I can't play even you call lot. us favourites against. So we need to beat United first before we yeah. even get to that point. Even that game at the Bridge, I give us slight favourites in that. But I think it'll be a draw. Because that's in a couple of weeks after the international break. I think that's the fourth. Yeah, the Thursday after yeah. or a Thursday night kickoff. So that's what I think it is. I'm and thinking I might last... go to that one. I'm not too sure. Yeah, go pull up. Flawless tell me this is an absolute... Oh, big up, my guy. No, nah, but I was we'll thinking, because only because I know we're going to do back again on the Friday morning. So I'm thinking, like, mm. I might stream in the evening so I, I've at least done my content. Plus, I, I'm ready for something to piss me off in that game because that fixture always does. Remember, last season, you got absolutely cooked us at the bridge. We went one nil up with a jammy penalty. I thought, I don't know how we're doing this, but give me this victory. I've waited years. Then that Casemiro equaliser in like the ninety fifth minute. Crazy. That header was. I crazy. was fuming. Crazy. I was like, really? Again? Again? <laughs> Fucking again? Someone gets a jammy equaliser. Love Every that. time I think we're in a good position to beat Man United, some bullshit happens. The year yeah. before, we don't finish our chance and Jorginho just gives Sancho his first goal. He did. That was crazy. Callum hudson Odoi and others just missing enough chances in that game. It was crazy. You might miss so many chances. Then we went game. to Old Trafford and it was just Havertz stinking up Trafford. Oh, it's fucking annoying, that fixture. We were in 1920 <laughs> where we had the two offside goals. Um, Batshuayi getting kicked in the nuts by Maguire. He didn't get sent off, and he bagged the second. We that, always yeah. get the worst luck in that fixture. The worst. Then Maguire should have got another penalty in the year after that, and we didn't get it. There's two nil nils that season. That was a lockdown season. Yeah, our record against you lot sucks. That needs to end. That, that's the nah, first thing he can do if he wants to turn things around. Nah, nah, Change that record. That. I need that to carry on. I need to beat you lot in the, at the bridge in the in the league. I don't know the last time we beat you lot at the bridge. It's been a minute in the Premier League. I can't even remember. That's 2020. In 2020. Who was the game? Who scored? The Maguire one. Oh, was, that, was that the last time? I was thinking it was under Oli. That's what I was thinking. Yeah, when that was Oli. Oh, was it Oli? Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, yeah, when we went there with Lingard in the false nine. Oh, yeah, that was there. That was, oh, was no, that no, Martial F scored. And Martial uh, scored on Maguire. I'm thinking of the FA Cup because we beat you lot in the FA Cup there as well. I think yeah, yeah that's when I first met Saeed. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. That's crazy. But now nah, we need to beat you lot in the in the league and then FA Cup. I'm not saying don't cut out Coventry. We'll get past Coventry. Bad as these players are, I'm confident going into that game. We'll get past Coventry soon. Yeah, I, I don't see Coventry pulling anything out. And that's no that. disrespect to Coventry. That's any championship side. It could be Leicester, it could be Leeds. 
will be any, in my opinion, will be any semi, will be any championship side in the semi final of the FA Cup. Don't mean it'll be pretty. Don't mean it'll be great football. Don't mean we, I'm not saying we walk through them. It could be a 1 0, 2 1 type thing, but we'll win the game. So, yes, I will count out Coventry. I'm sorry. And that's not even disrespectful. There's it's not, it should be being a championship, championship team, simple as. Yeah. Like, that's what it should be. But Lewis, man, great show, man. Always great chopping up with you. Like I said, this show about all giving you your flowers. Anything you, else you want to add to the people, them, anything else we might have missed that you want to talk about or mention? Yeah, no, it's, it's just been another great show. I love, I enjoyed hopping on for these ones. So it's great to be back and everything. Big up to the chat. Appreciate all the love from you guys. It's been a really good show. I've enjoyed a lot of you, of you guys' comments. Um, I'm going to try get another video up tomorrow. Um, I'll figure, I'll figure out what I'm going to talk about, but there's a couple topics on my mind. So there'll be something out tomorrow. And, um, yeah. I don't know when we'll be streaming, but I'll try. I might try get a stream up for Thursday. Might try get a stream up for Thursday. So keep a lookout for that. And yeah, big up my guy. Great to be back on. No, and obviously we're gonna keep running these specials regardless because there's always something new. And I'm glad we've got to sit down and actually talk about your backstory as well. So we can look back at this months and years later and come back to this. So yeah, big up to everyone who has been locked in. Let me make sure I didn't miss any super chats or anything else that I start as well. One second, let me see. Big up to C24 for this super chat. Says, the Chelsea fans who are still loyal to, po to Poch, I strongly believe they enjoy abusive relationships in their personal lives. Stop allowing Poch to abuse you with laughing emoji, says to C24. That is crazy. But I hear you, man. Either that or they're just one of them guys who refuse to admit they're wrong about anything. Yeah, and that's what it is. You just have to. You have to. Big up to Carsten as well, who says, your intro got me. Yes, don't miss chances to tell people or parents what they are for you or that you love them. I wasted years. Unfortunately, I taken my time when my dad got ill. You regret it. Big up to you, Carsten. This is a fantastic yeah, comment in regards to it. And that's what this show is all about. But I fully agree with you, Carsten. Do this in life. And I do that. Give people their flowers, including yourself. And that's why well, my thought process behind this show. And the fact that Lewis says, yeah, I love doing these is because it's like, right, it's about, all about giving content creators their flowers. Like I said at the start, don't wait for till someone's not here and passed away to say how great they are, what they did and how they impacted you and how much you was a fan and loved their content. Like, no, no, no. Give people their flowers while they can still smell them. That's, that's what it is. So big up to you. Um, big up, I hope the best for your family. Yes, 110%. Big up to my guy, Rawls, as well, man. Says big up the man them apart from AFT. Big up, bro. Prime. I never really watch football content creators until you, man. Hey, big up to Rawls every single time. Big up to my guy, King. Who I'll says, see you at the bridge again soon. Yeah, Rawls will be there soon. I've always said it. I've always said it in the back again. I've always said it. The back again is one of the best and funniest podcasts on YouTube. Love King every mm. single time. Black Diamond says, Sarcasm City, Legends Edition. Part two, been absolute fire. A big up Black Diamond every single time. LOL, back again. Podcast is one of them ones, says C24. Big up to my guy Vader in the court every single time as well. Yes, gaming for life. Lewis so is all the absolute legend. above Chelsea. Yeah, yeah. Of like all the bandages above team. Chelsea, which ones would you take? <laughs> Large up, flawless and carefree. Um, over, if it's over Pochettino, just in general, I f I'll probably take all of them. But in terms of who I want to bring in, Pep, Klopp, um, I give the Zerbi a go. I'm not really too sure about his defending, but I know he's good structurally in midfield and attack. Um, who else is there? Ange, I'd bring in Ange. Emery. Not Arteta. One Arteta. Yeah, that'll be about it. First. Fez, <laughs> big up to Vader every single time as well. Big up for man. life, but to that already, big up to you. C24, I presume that was the super chat you was talking about. If I miss one, let me know. Yeah, second that Lewis is a legend, says Ravi. Thanks, Flawless, for getting the best on your channel. And yeah, man, this content also for you, look. It's also allowed to give people content creators their flowers as well. Like I said, get their backstory away from 
what's currently going on at their football clubs as well. Big up to Kings. There's big up Flawless and Lewis for this great episode with the fire emojis as well. Big up to Anderson. Says, creating legendary content. Flawless, keep pushing, King. Hey, much, much, much appreciated for that. Big up, bro. As well, man. Big up to my guy, Sheik. Says, Flawless, you deserve flowers as well for doing this type of content. Hey, appreciate it, Sheik, man. You lot make sure awesome, man. You're a hard you worker as well, bro. Love family. That's what I was saying. 10k has been help, been way overdue for you. The amount of work that you put into this thing. And we got hey, there, now man. you got to first 10k. The next 10k will be a lot quicker. Oh yeah, we getting there. Hundred percent, man. That is definitely the aim. Is the next 10k. We gonna keep this show on the road. But you lot, make sure you subscribe to Lewis's channel. Carefree Lewis G. Link is in the title. Let me know who's live to raid as well, people. Let me know who's live. Lewis, again, anything you want to add? Let me know what you got coming up. Uh, to the end of the season, actually. You know what I'm saying? Any anything big planned? Or just anything in general? Ah, just still following Chelsea throughout the rest of this abomination of a season. Um, I'm going to try to get Capital Conflict running in the next few days. That. But, like, there'll be one or two streams this week. The rest will probably be videos if there's anything, just because jury duty is a fucking nightmare and it's just dragged the rest of my evenings off. But I guess I'm getting used to waking up early for the first time in about six years. Yeah, which crazy. I guess is all right. But we move. <laughs> That's good. That is crazy. And you're not do. saying rats. Just... Yeah, go for No, I was gonna say go this on. is the one thing I liked about being self-employed and everything. I I wake up on my own time. You I don't I don't I do not like waking up in the a.m. bruv. It nah. stinks. Yeah, yeah, it's horrible. Is it's absolutely horrible. That is one of the biggest benefits to this. As much as you can mm. be tired, like waking up so like early afternoon or later afternoon. Especially so I've been yeah. in jury duty for two days. I haven't even been on a fucking case yet. I just, I've just sat yeah. there for seven hours on my phone, just rotting. Do you have to? So you I'm actually waiting. have? To, you have to do it if they shout you for it. Yeah, yeah. You could get you could get a a letter into your yard any day saying you've been selected. What That's happens it. if you don't open the letter? Well, shit, I sent you the letter. Oh, did he send you the letter? Right, I'm just asking. I'm just asking. Yeah, so, no, no, because they'll send you another one in it because um, you need to confirm if you can make that date or if you want to defer it for another date in the in the next year. But you have Jeez. to do it because yeah, it's, like, it, it's, your, it's your legal obligation and everything. Cool. Although I'll take the fact that I've done nothing for the last two days because I, mm -hmm. I got to leave early today. Hopefully it means tomorrow's the same so I can leave early again and go football, but get this two weeks over and done with, and then I can just go back to my normal pattern and just streaming normally and doing the shit I enjoy doing. No, Plus, I'm also going to claim loss of earnings so I can get the maximum get back. Your bread? No, man, get your bread back. Yeah, if I, can, if I can get six bills for this, then, you know what, give me another week. Fuck it. Yeah. I'll be yeah. there. Serious, get your bread. A big up to A Solomon says big up the man and big up Lewis. Uh get Raheem Shillings out of my club. Big up to you, A Solomon, yeah, being a member that, of the channel. Get that fraud gone. Oh, so you're done with Sterling, yeah? After that performance. Yeah, I'm, I'm finished with him. I'm finished with him. He, he is too much of a volume player for me. Boring. Fez. Fez. Give, give Mudrick them minutes, give Madawaki them minutes, give Chakumeka them minutes. They can actually dribble past players and try to shoot. Fair enough. And on that note, people, we will close out. We will redirect to rants. So just put Sarcasm City Raid in capital letters in the chat. Hope you lot have enjoyed the specials. I'll be running them all week long. So tomorrow, we've got one at 4 p.m. You have to wait and see who the special guest is. And then 10 p.m. on with Matisse, who was in the chat here earlier. So big up to Matisse. So two tomorrow, one Thursday, one on Friday, one on Thursday, 8 to 8 p.m., one on Friday, 10 to 8 p.m., Sundays. 50 50 it could be when we're looking at like 4 30 5 30 but just keep a lookout on the upcoming live stream schedule and we're back live tonight on the playback as well people nba watch along on the playback san antonio spurs versus dallas mavericks so make sure if you're an nba fan www.playback.tv slash sarcasm city tv or download the playback app and if you have an nba league pass you can watch along with us on the screen and on top of that don't forget if the specials, if these are your favorite shows, there's a playlist for these specials on the channel. So you click on the playlist and you'll see all the shows as well. And on top of all that, you lot are very good at taking in information. This show, all the other specials on the channel are available on audio only platforms. So whether it's Lewis's, whether it's 
the one with troops or another one people spotify itunes apple podcast soundcloud wherever you get your podcast you can get us in audio only form as well lewis my brother love man thoroughly enjoyed this man i love for everything you've done for man in this space as well but oh, man. Time, oh, the only time. way is up for both of us man yeah, every man, time you, you'll get there and yes people this has been the Sarcasm City TV special. A Sarcasm City TV special with special guest Carefree Lewis G live on the Sarcasm City TV YouTube. Thank you very much for tuning in.